Hey Kelly, I wanted to shoot a quick video here to explain the difference between subscription plans and um, payment plans because you asked a question about it and it sounded like maybe there was a little confusion about what uh, the distinction is, but I don't think you're alone in that. I see a lot of people misuse or mispurpose subscription plans because they're just not clear on what the other option is. Um, so let me, let me just start by saying that you can use them in pretty much the same way and your customer probably won't know the difference. So from a customer facing perspective, it's not that big of a deal, but there are a few considerations inside Infusionsoft and I'm gonna show you as best I can what you should look out for. So I've got this light bulb package here and um, you know I've added a price here and I currently don't have any subscription plans for this particular product. So because I just have the one price, um, over here on the links tab, I just have the one link as well. And if I go to my storefront here, this is my storefront, I see, okay, light bulb package, I can click on it. It takes me to the product page where I can decide, um, you know, if there are any options, I can decide, I can read more about it, I can change the quantity, uh, that sort of thing. And then if I click add to cart, it takes me to the checkout page and I can purchase this light bulb package for $100, right? And if I, if I wanted to add a payment plan, right? If I wanted to give them the opportunity to pay for this over three three different payments, let's remove it. And we'll go uh, back to my storefront here. So first let's add a subscription and I'll show you why that part um, isn't ideal, right? So if we go to the product here and we add a subscription, we can choose, like you said, bill every month and we'll choose one month and we can choose over three different cycles and we can choose, hey, we want to bill, you know, $33.33 or you could do like $35, right? And, and charge a $5 finance fee or whatever that ends up being. So let's go ahead and add that. And then on this tab, uh, you also have the choice of doing subscription only. Uh, and what that does, if you check that box, you've probably figured it out, but it, it um, basically makes this part obsolete. So usually when you're selling a subscription, it's a subscription, right? Rarely do I see people who need both uh, have a one-time price as well as subscription plans, but you know, there's, there's certainly some use cases for that. So let's go ahead and leave both. Um, and now what you'll notice is once I save this over here on the links tab, there should be two different links, right? One, which is just the light bulb package and the other, which is the light bulb package uh, every month for three months. So let's go back to our storefront here and I'll refresh this just to make sure that it has updated the subscription plan I just added. So now if a customer comes to this page and they decide, hey, I want the light bulb package, when they click through, uh, they're gonna see two options, one time for $100, or $35 every month for three months. That's basically the payment plan. So if I choose this one and I add it to the cart, right? Um, they see, hey, $35 today, and then in 30 days they'll be billed, and 30 days after that they'll be billed again. So like I said, the customer is gonna basically experience the exact same thing. The problem in Infusionsoft with doing it that way is when you come down to your reporting, Infusionsoft views subscriptions a little bit differently than it views your regular orders, right? So um, over here, if I go to search through my orders, I've got view orders, but I also have view subscriptions. And the reason that I draw this distinction is because with a subscription plan, each monthly payment or each weekly payment or each annual payment, whatever you have it broken down to, is considered a unique order. So for your total number of orders, as well, for, as well as for all of your reports here, you'll have that amount, that payment amount, broken out onto its own order, which will be uh, obviously spread across multiple reports. If you're doing monthly or weekly or quarterly reports, it'll be broken down to show you that single order across three different months, which can definitely affect the, the numbers you're seeing as well as the validity of your, your data here. So. Um, I don't recommend doing a subscription because it'll just kind of muck things up here in your orders searching or your e-commerce reporting. Um, it also gives you fewer options in terms of flexibility for when that subscription is available. So as you noticed, right, um, when, I was, uh, when I was here in my storefront, um, I had the choice. I didn't have to type in anything. I didn't have to access anything. Uh, as soon as I clicked on the product, it prompted me, said, hey, Greg, cool, you're here. Which one do you want? Do you want the one-time order or do you want the subscription? 
and it gave me those those options, right? So you don't have a choice here about when it shows up. It shows up for everyone every time. And that's another drawback is you may not want the payment plan to always be available. You might want to control uh, to whom it, it's displayed or, or under what circumstances it shows up, right? So I've seen some people who can't use or don't want to use subscriptions for that particular reason as well. Now, if we come over here to order forms, and this is probably um, less of an issue if you're using the storefront, but if you are using order forms to process your orders, right? Let's do my uh, light bulb. Well, you don't have a choice of showing both the one-time payment as well as the three months, right? If I type in light bulb, here we go, it's gonna ask, hey, cool, which one do you want? Right? Do you want to sell it as a one-time product or do you want it as a every month for three months, right? Either or, right? So you have to make the decision here. And if I if I do it this way, right, then the uh, the buyer, the customer doesn't have the choice, right? I've selected because that's the way order forms work is you're controlling the buying experience. So under this circumstance, I've selected, hey, they're buying it, you know, for $35, you know, every month for three months and if you open up the link for that order form you'll see it doesn't even give them a choice right so it's not technically a payment plan this is the subscription and that's what they get to buy period okay so um that's how i would not do it <laughs> which i think probably prompts the question is all right greg so if we don't want the subscription plan how uh, should we do it what's the right way to do it and i don't fault you at all for not um for not noticing this because infusionsoft does a, a poor job of documenting this particular feature and i i kind of alluded to it but i've seen a lot of people who are just unclear on the confusion here or on the distinction here so under payments here you have a section for payment plans. And this is where you will set up true payment plans, right? So you get to dis decide, and I can go ahead and, and add a brand new one here. So you get to decide what you want to show up and when, right? So um, let's go ahead and call this my light bulb payment plan. And we'll say splits the payment across three orders, right? And you get the choice of adding a finance charge. So you don't really have that option with the subscription route. You can make the subscription fee more, but it won't show them the finance charge. It won't break it out. Uh, and you don't have the choice of doing a percentage. You only do it in a fixed amount. So the reason that you may be... Um, didn't notice this is because payment plans are not specific to a certain product. Payment plans are and will be applied to the entire order. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, finance charge, uh, I want to add $10, right? Or you can do a percentage, but again, it's the entire order, order total, not just the product. Um, scheduling how many payments, we want to do three payments, days between payments, 30 days. You can also designate days till start. You can do that with a subscription plan, free trial, but uh, this one's just a little bit cleaner. Um, you can choose or, or override a merchant account uh, with your payment plan. Uh, so you could decide, do I want to override uh, whatever the shopping cart merchant account would be and use this instead? In this case, I only have one merchant account, so I'm just going to leave it as no. Auto charge payment plan, almost always you want that to be yes. And you can also refine the days between recharge attempts as well as the max number of retries if for some reason you wanted to change those. And then once you click save, this payment plan is now available and it's gonna be available for any product because right now there's no criteria. So what you get to do is decide under what circumstances you'd like this payment plan to be available. So for example, I can say between now and the end of the month, right? Or between now and the end of the month, but only if they spend $100 or more, right? So that way I can run a promotion and say to my audience, hey, I would like you guys to buy this light bulb package. Uh, and if you buy it between now and the end of the month, you can you know, split it into three easy payments of $33 each, right? Something like that. You can also designate, hey, they only get this payment plan option if they're buying at least one of this product, you know, and no more than 100 of it, right? So you can set those types of conditions up. Let's go ahead and check back in here to our light bulb. And now that I have this payment plan added and I've updated the criteria to be between one and 100 light bulbs, when we access this, right, uh, view shopping cart, 
we should see that payment plan show up as an option, but this time it'll show up in the actual checkout page, not on the product page. So you may remember we saw uh, the subscription show up here. Well, if I go add to cart, this should take me to the uh, checkout page. We might actually have one or two products in there because I've done this more than once. So let's go ahead and remove that one. And now over on the right, we have our payment plans. So I have the single payment of $100 or three payments of uh, $36.67 because there's a finance charge of $10. So you can see here, it says the finance charge has been added. This is the order total. Um, and then down here toward the bottom, they can enter their payment information to check out. So that's kind of the benefit of payment plans is it just is a separate item. Um, it's not a subscription. It's not tied to that product specifically. And now when they order, any payments that happen 30 days or 60 days from now will be attributed to one order record, which as I kind of pointed out, it just makes your reports and your searches a lot cleaner. So you don't have to worry about excluding payment plans. I'm using air quotes on that from your subscriptions reports. Subscriptions will be pure subscriptions and orders will be pure orders. Um, let's go back over here to our payment plans area. Uh, you don't have to charge a finance charge. So if that worries you having it show up here or having it show up there, uh, you, don't, you definitely don't have to charge that. It is a relatively common practice just because if you allow someone to pay you over a period of time, the chance or the risk that they'll default or that they won't pay just goes up, right? If you collect the money today, the transaction's over with. But if you extend it over a period of 60 days or three payments, just the likelihood that something will go wrong in that period uh, escalates. One last thing I want to point out is that if you add multiple pieces of criteria, you... Um, you have to meet all of them. So this criteria functions as and logic. So if you set up a date range as well as a promo code, they need to enter that promo code, but it also needs to be during that date range. So just as a heads up, if you find yourself using this version or the, the, the um, Infusionsoft supported version of payment plans, you may run into some issues with criteria. And the solution is you just create a unique payment plan for each circumstance that you want payment plans to show up, right? So you might have one for specific products only if that product is in the cart. You might also have one that coincides with the promotion you're running to make sure that people know if they enter the three pay po promo code during the month of July, they can get a special uh, payment plan that they wouldn't be able to access during other times of the year. So that's the biggest distinction there. Um, like I said, it may not be the end of the world, but it's worth understanding that difference. And that way you get to choose, do I want to do the three month subscription or do I want to do the actual payment plan? And you can choose which one you know suits your needs the best. If you've got questions about this or about any element here in the e-commerce setup, um, I just want to briefly point out that I've got a course here on my website, monkeypodmarketing.com forward slash e-commerce pod, where we dig into every single aspect of the e-commerce pod. I go kind of piece by piece right through everything you need to know with regards to using and configuring the Infusionsoft e-commerce. So if you find yourself using it often or supporting your clients who need it, um, I would just encourage you to check out my e-commerce pod and you know, feel free to jump in and, and if you have questions along the way, let me know. Good luck.